is a video to uh, demonstrate some of the newest developments in the Neuro Navigator. At the moment, we're looking at the EEG from an individual who had a traumatic brain injury, uh, struck in the right hemisphere, uh, and he's uh, in his right parietal, right central region, he's multiple uh, deviations from normal. These are Z-scores in the bottom, uh, and uh, the electrical potential and the power spectrum on the uh, top right. Uh, and we can scan through that record and, and edit and do all the things we have over the years with NeuroGuide. But now we have the ability to drill down and integrate the sources of uh, the deviation from normal and different hubs and nodes of the networks of the brain, and also to look at the connectivity. That's what's going to be special about this particular uh, uh, demonstration. Essentially, you, to activate the neuronavigator, you go to the Loretta Neuronavigator, you can look at raw scores or Z scores. I already activated the Neuronavigator, and so I'm just going to uh, bring it up to save a little bit of time. Uh, this is the Neuronavigator. I put it to 5 hertz because that was the frequency where there's the most deviation from normal. Now, there's a scalp model, a head model, and a cortex inside as, as well as connectivity. So at the moment, we're looking at the deviation from normal here in the right parietal region. And you can see the, uh, the Robin areas, the five, uh, that's uh, four standard deviations outside of normal, and you can move that around and uh, identify the peak, the maximum, uh, minimum, et cetera. But the scalp potential is also seen there. That is the electrical uh, potential, the deviation from normal, and the electrical potential. I can go to the scalp map, and I can also look at the Laplacian of the scalp surface. And that's the Laplacian, that's the current density right at the scalp surface. So I'm going to go back to the electrical potential. And uh, those are microvolts uh, squared per power, actually Z scores uh, produced by the electrical energies of the brain. I can change the size of the head, etc. Now I'm going to drill down and look inside at the connectivity. Uh, there's a variety of different networks we can look at. Right now it's a default network. I'm going to take a look at the Anxiety network, I'm going to turn on the connectivity, which is inside here. You can't see it at the moment very well, unless I change the transparencies. But for the moment, I'm just going to get rid of the scalp map and get rid of the uh, head model and just look at the connectivity itself. Okay, I'm going to expand this a bit. These, this is coherence. At this, uh, and then we can change the Z-score thresholds for the coherence, uh, get the areas that are most deviant from normal. Uh, we can also look at phase differences. If I click connectivity here, uh, that actually was phase differences. Here is uh, coherence. These are z-scores for coherence. And then here's z-scores for phase differences. And we can look just at the connectivity, if we wish, by removing the cortex. Now, this is just connectivity of coherence of the center voxels. We can look at where the center voxels are by clicking on the center voxel up here. And now we're looking at just the center voxels. It's always a good idea to add uh, the brain as a reference. So I'm going to click cortex. Now I can see where uh, that deviation from normal is. At any time I want, I can go to a volume view and get a better view of, uh, of the brain and the networks. Uh, and we know that the right parietal is the region that's most deviant from normal, but I can, again, add a head model and a scalp model. I can uh, increase the uh, transparency or the lack of transparency of the, of the brain so that we can um, um, look at the cortex here. I'm going to make the transparency uh, zero, and that way you'll be able to see the, the cortex inside a little bit better. That, and if we move the scalp map and the head model, there's the rendered brain with zero transparency. We're now going to increase the transparency, let's say, to 60%. And uh, we can see the uh, nodes and the, that are deviant from normal. We can look at the ventral attention network. We can look at the addiction network. Uh, we can look at the autism spectrum network. Here's the default network. And so you can evaluate the various networks. Here's the language network. This individual has good language. Uh, and you can look at mirror neurons, pain, 
the depression and mood network, uh, tinnitus, etc. Uh, for these, uh, these are functional MRI and PET scan derived uh, network nodes linked to symptoms. Uh, and then we can do back go back to four view uh, and scan uh, and uh, uh, through the brain. Uh, look at the various aspects of the brain that are deviant from normal. I've activated the head model. I'm now put the scalp model. Again, there's the electrical potential. Now I'm going to navigate through the brain. I'm going to take the cutting tool so I can go down through the brain and evaluate it. Uh, I can look at it from the left only. I can look at it from the right. I'm going to stay in bounds here. And this is the right hemisphere. And now I can look just at the back of the head if I wish. And I can move that, of course, uh, as I wish as I go through the brain. At any moment, I can uh, eliminate the scalp and the cortex. And again, just look at the network. In this case, it's the tinnitus network. Here's an executive network. The colors tell you the greatest deviation from normal. And we can expand that and scan through it again. But this gives you an idea of the power of now of looking at connectivity in terms of phase differences and coherence between the Brodmann areas of the brain. I'm going to bring all of these views back. I'm going to get back to the bottom. Um, so that we can examine the network in greater detail. One of the interesting features is to turn on the slicing tools, axial, chromal, and sagittal slicing. Now we can go through the brain with the slicing tools. Uh, we can uh, eliminate the uh, cutting box or put it back on and then eliminate the cortex and, and, and the head model and the scalp model and now we're left with just the planes of the cortex. This is the sagittal plane that uh, we can control uh, over here or here. This is I'm moving the coronal plane now. There's the axial plane. I move the uh, sagittal plane. And you can see where these networks are with respect to the landmarks on the brain and again we can always go to the volume view and examine the deviation from normal in these different networks linked to symptoms and on these various planes the axial plane coronal plane the uh, sagittal plane and uh, then at any moment or any time we wish we can bring the full brain back by clicking on the cortex, head model, scalp model, and go back to where we were, resize it. We can also change the theme so we get a, a view when it's uh, different colors uh, to give us a, where things stand out more. I'm going to click the four view again, and then we're going to um, orient the head and uh, remove the various aspects of it, except for the network and the slices. We can get rid of the uh, cortex. And now it's just the slices. And then we can look just at the network, coherence, phase, uh, phase uh, uh, slope index in the future to look at uh, the effective connectivity or the magnitude of information flow um, as we um, use these tools to navigate through the brain uh, and to evaluate our patient symptoms with respect to deviation from normal in the various hubs and nodes in the brain linked to his symptoms. In this case, the right parietal lobe was damaged. The individual uh, has spatial neglect uh, has good language function, but does not shave the left side of his face uh, or write on the left side of a paper, and he's uh, semi-paralyzed on the left side. Uh, so these are new tools. The important new one is the ability 
to evaluate just the networks. And I'm going to give a little bit of a, a cortex as a as a um, way to see uh, the landmarks of the brain. I'm going to go to 40 percent uh, transparent so you get a little bit better view of the cortex. I'm going to go to uh, volume view and evaluate uh, the deviation from normal. In the future, we'll be able to reduce this, um, uh, the number of connections. Uh, for example, if for nothing else, we can go to the uh, language network. It's a very small number of connections because it's primarily in the left hemisphere. And then we can eliminate uh, connections when we change the z-score threshold. Uh, so there's a number of things we'll be doing in the future to make it easier to navigate, to go through networks, uh, to link uh, symptoms to dysregulation in the hubs of different networks, and the networks are quite extensive now. Uh, salience network, schizophrenic network. If we want, we can eliminate the cortex and just go through some of these networks. There's a diffusion tensor imaging local frontal. That's frontal temporal. Um, there, here's the Hagman hubs, uh, various Hagman hubs, the main hubs with. Uh, um, uh, diffusion spectral imaging and, and uh, tractog uh, tractography, uh, musulum hubs, the uh, intercorrelation networks from Laird et al., uh, et cetera. So all the main uh, hubs and networks that have been established uh, with over 30,000 peer-reviewed journal articles in functional MRI and PET scan are inside of the neural navigator. Uh, and then we use the inverse solution from the scalp surface to compute the sources of the EEG uh, and uh, then identify the uh, deviations from normal and the magnitude of the current being generated in different uh, parts of the brain. We can always do the all slices and, and go through the brain this way as well. Uh, and so that we have a better view of which parts of the brain are linked to the symptoms. As you can see, the right parietal region is deviant from normal, and it has consequences in terms of the connectivity of the right parietal lobe to other parts of the brain that we can examine uh, in great detail. So this is a, another view of the uh, development of uh, NeuroGuide uh, with the ability to look at networks now and uh, to evaluate the brain in even greater detail than we could before with major emphasis on networks and the distribution of uh, electrical uh, and current density uh, sources um, are on the scalp surface and their distribution. Uh, so you can drill down from the scalp surface with electrical energies to the sources inside the brain to the connectivity between the hubs of the networks that uh, are in three dimensions as represented by Broadman areas.